and understanding this morning. Speak to us, Lord, in such a way that we will understand with all simplicity of heart this morning. And let us be able to be drawers of this world. Let the grace that helps the performance of this world and the doing of this world be released unto us as we listen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. So I'll be speaking about living by faith in an hostile economy. Living by faith in an hostile economy. Now, I'd like to quickly throw a caveat by saying that becoming better intellectually or staying woke or being woke does not preserve you from the challenges that is going on in the world. That you are woke, that you've stayed woke, that you are intellectually sound, that you have PhD in about three subjects, that you have all the certifications ever, that you are a tech guru, a tech giant, that you are a great sports person, does not preserve anyone from the challenges that is going on right now. Praise the Lord. It is affecting everybody. And to further shock us, what is happening in Nigeria right now is nothing compared to what is happening in some parts of the world. And for context, I'd like to really talk about Turkey. The number of people who have lost their life in Turkey is massive. In a day, the number of people that died in Turkey, that, that number did not die in countries like Finland and Norway. And sadly, we heard about the death of the Ghanaian star player who was supposed to travel to fly out of Turkey 11 p.m. But he decided not to travel, but to shift his flight. And that was when the earthquake happened. Praise the Lord. Now, we are not casting as passion. We are just saying that these things, safety does not come by being intellectual. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that some trust in us is some trust in chariots, but we put our trust in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I'd like to encourage you to forget that wokeness when it comes to the things of the Spirit. To forget that you are woke, to forget that you are intellectual, to forget that you are, you are handsome or pretty. Praise the Lord. That they are the realities of life that you and I have to face. If you met my mom, you know that my mom is a very fashionable woman my mom is very fashionable she's a fashionista she likes buying clothes my mom is very pretty she's all she's almost as tall as i am very fair wonderful woman when my mom died in 2020 after a surgery and went to look at her in the hospital i didn't believe she was gone i was touching her hair mom pulling her cheek mom we couldn't believe it. That tells you that the challenges we face in life has nothing to do with how pretty or how fine you are. Are you here with me? It is the principles that you obey. It is the principles that you, that you obey. That is what saves you. Are you guys here with me? No matter how woke you are, when you jump up, you come down. Are you here with me? The law of gravity acts upon the surface of the earth anywhere you are upon this earth it might be delayed in some places because you see the law of gravity has its effect on on the earth but in some places of the world it can be delayed by 0 0.00 you know stuff and i know this because i'm a geographer because because there are some uh, forces that act on when a man jumps up praise the lord but that doesn't mean you won't come down. Are you here with me? So for you, for you not to come down when you jump, you have to put another principle, another law in place. Praise the Lord. And that is why we have, quote and unquote, savings and spending. If you spend most of your money, you won't have any funds again. If you save your money, you will have funds. Are you here with me? But there's another superior law that is better than savings and that is investment because you see when you save your money the percentage you get from it is very small compared to when you invest your money praise the lord now when you also invest your money it depends on what you invest your money in 
There are some things that bring more profits. And there are some that bring speedy profits. But the rate at which that investment will not yield again is high. Are you here with me? I'm trying to educate us that there are principles and there are laws that if you are human upon the face of the earth and you don't respect these principles, you will not be successful. Don't tell me if I do anything, God, God forgives me. Yes, God will forgive you. But you have broken the principle. Are you guys here with me? If you steal and you are caught and you ask God to forgive you, you God will forgive you. As a matter of fact, if they tell me, I will forgive you. And I might even be part of the people that will escort you to the courts where they will convict you and they will send you to jail. So if what you have done deserves a 10 years imprisonment, you will, you will go and fulfill that. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. And so that is why nice people go through trying times. That is why nice people go through tough times. Because no matter how nice you are, if you do not recognize the principles and the laws of God that God has given to make his sorrow, then you suffer. Are you guys here with me? So you must have that understanding in life. Praise the Lord. So faith is one of the answers to the chaos and upheaval that is happening around us. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the confidence of things not seen. Let's really check Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I try to lay that uh, foundation because sometimes Christians, we can be spooky. We can come and just pray in tongues and, and say some ephemeral things and decree and declare that I cannot be poor, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. But you are not fulfilling a particular law or, or, or a principle of God. Praise the Lord. I remember a certain minister who said he wants to be a minister of the gospel, but God has not told him to go into full time. But he kept telling everybody that I'm a minister, I'm into full time. He was not doing anything. When he began to suffer and when he began to go hungry, if I tell you the kind of job that that man took, it will shock you. So it is not wrong if God has called you to be a minister and you are working. Praise the Lord. But if God has told you not to work, then that means God will provide for you. Are you guys here with me? So faith is not stupidity. Faith is the reality of how God wants us to live. Are you guys here with me? Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Verse 2 of the message says, The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors. It set them above the crowd. An eagle is a bird. An oak is a bird. An owl is a bird. A parrot is a bird, right? A chicken is a bird. But can you compare a chicken to an eagle? Can you compare an orc to an eagle? You see, an eagle or an orc, they can, it can sweep, sweep down. It can fly down, sweep down, pick things and fly off. But not all birds can do that. Are you here with me? Some birds can just mount up wings and just fly. An eagle can do that. It can just, from the sitting, from the standing position, it can just fly up. A dove can do that. But a dog can do that. A dog has to run a bit. Even chickens, when they fly, you, you hear so, so much noise. Are you guys here with me? But an eagle, when an eagle, when an, when ox come to pick the cheeks of a chicken, sometimes you don't even hear. It will just come. To just pick it up. What am I saying? I'm saying that faith is a superior law. It's a superior principle to complaining, to murmuring. And you see as we go on. Hallelujah. And so that's why in verse 2, the Bible says that, that the act of faith is what distinguished ancestors. It set them above the crowd. So what distinguishes you and I from other people is faith. Are you guys here with me? And that's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 13, it said the just shall live by faith. It didn't say that the just shall live by scope. It didn't say the just shall live by crime. It didn't say the just shall live by, by stealing. 
He didn't say the just, the, the just by live by work, by being work, by saying work. Praise the Lord. You can dress well and have all the swags in life and still be poor. And still not have anything. Praise the Lord. In my first year as a preacher, I got to understand that this is not the suit that makes the preacher. It is not the words that you speak that makes the preacher. It's the power of God. It's God that makes you the preacher. You can have all the suits, you can have all the house, you can have all the words and still be poor. And still not have food. First year of marriage, my wife and I, we were, we were not poor, but there are some things we, we didn't have. There was a time for like a week, all we had was yam. Just yam, just cook yam. Yam, my wife said, yeah, what are we going to uh, My wife has been sweet, sweet. So what do we, I said, uh, you're asking me, yam now. Now, there, there was a time that all we had was Indomie noodles. We just cook noodles, 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 noodles. We just cook that. Are you here with me? So, I got to know that life does not answer by being woke. Say after me, life does not answer. To being woke or to being stylish, it doesn't answer by canvas. Are you here with me? The person that has money on his, on his ATM card can walk up to the ATM no matter how small, and put it and put the code, and money comes out. And you, with all your bigness and everything, you can't harass ATM to give you money. Even those that broke ATMs, how much did they get there? Are you here with me? So, faith is the way God has destined us as Christians to live. So, the just shall live by faith. The just are those that God has declared righteous. That God has declared righteous. Praise the Lord. Are you guys being blessed? Follow me as I follow Christ. So faith is the answer to chaos, to upheavals. It is by which that elders obtain what now? Good report. So faith is the substance of what you expect. Miracle, are you here with me? Faith is the substance of what you expect. Are you guys here with me? What did I tell my wife for her to agree to marry me? I didn't have a house. I didn't have a flat. I was staying in a borrowed house. I didn't have a suit. I didn't have a car. I just told my wife, I love you so very much. I just casted my vision. And I told her that I see you in my vision. So when I cast my vision and I told my wife, I spoke by faith. So what I spoke was the faith words. That was what she saw. That was what, that was what um, created a picture in our hearts. Are you guys here with me? You know, you know, it's easy when you tell a woman that I'm a billionaire. My name is this. I'm fly. I Dubai. I do this. I do that. This is what I do. And my name is this. You can Google me. I'm up. I'm a Christian. I'm this. I'm that. I just love you. I, I want to marry you. You know, she can go and Google you up. And I had nothing to my name. I could not be Googled. The bit that was seen about me was disheartening. I didn't have a good shoes. I had a black shoe that has the hole that I prayed that helped there will be no rain so that, so, so, so that my soul will not be wet. You know when you are in the rain and rain drops on you? You know, there's something about your soul that gets wet. Sometimes when I don't want to take my bath at home and I'm very tired, but I need to feel cool. I have a hack that I do. I don't know if it works for you. Just go to the bedroom and I pour a lot of water on my legs. I don't know if it works for, for you guys. I just pour it on my, on my legs, then put small on my head. I just feel the chill. It's the same thing when you feel cold and you put your legs in warm water. Are you guys here with me? It works. Are you here with me? What you immerse your life in affects your life. You see, your life is so structured that and so compartmentalized that anything that any small thing that happens to you happens the whole of your life. And we can try it now. Can somebody give me a small pin, a needle, and somebody bring their fingers? And I and I and I punch I and I and I and I insert that needle into your into your fingers. And let's see if it will affect you. You know, you like 
Some people, once they just see that needle like this, why? Because small things can affect your life. So also, small faith can also lift your life. Are you guys there with me? If you have faith as small as a what? Mustard seed. That is all you need for life. Nobody's asking you to have basket of faith. No! God is not saying that. Are you guys there with me? So faith is the handle on what is unseen. So she might me by faith because she had God. Faith is trusting God. Listen to me, child of God. This will save your life. Faith is an invisible hand that receives miracles from God. Faith is a hand. Because without faith, nobody can please God. Somebody told me that he was praying and I was, that he had some issues, so he was praying. A man, married man, he said he was praying. And as he was praying, he kept praying that he was in distress, he was just praying. He said, after a while, he sensed that there was somebody in the room with him. He opened his eyes and looked around and started praying. He said, after a while, he felt a presence that he felt there were some people in his room. He said, he now ran out. He didn't pray. I said, why? He said, ah, it seems that I was not the only one in the room. I said, you shouldn't have run. He said, so what would I have done? I said, you were praying to who? Is it to God or to the devil? He said, you can't be praying to Jesus, to God, and the devil will come and stand there. I said, once you sense that, once you sense that atmosphere, as you praise God, as you worship him, then begin to just say, Father, thank you. Just kneel down. Just begin to just appreciate him. Praise the Lord. That is faith. Without faith, no man can please God. Are you guys here with me? When you marry, you will understand what faith means. And your wife comes, yeah, we don't have this. Your son goes, Daddy, we don't have, Daddy, I don't have this. Daddy, please, I need this money. And your dad comes, oh, please, I need this. I need this. You see, as married men, it's not because we are married that made us wise. It's because God is helping us. Are you here with me? Oh, don't worry. By tomorrow, we'll get that. Oh, don't worry. Okay, daddy, I'll call you. By tomorrow. Oh, mommy, I'll do this. You know, why? You are speaking by faith. Because you trust in God. A Christian that does not have a life of faith is a powerless Christian. The devil has already defeated you. Are you guys here with me? Are you learning? So you can't have hope if you don't see the way God sees. Because it's hope, hope. You see, hope is important to your faith. Hope is not faith. Hope boosts your faith. Hope are the things you expect. You see, if you don't have hope, you can't have faith. Lie, lie. Are you guys here with me? If you have no hope, forget faith. One millionaire committed suicide. He had all the millions, but he had no hope. One multi-billionaire opened his office door and he jumped out. Why? Because he was owing so much debt and there was turmoil in his soul and he killed himself. Why will I have $10 million in my account and I'm owing $25 million and I'll now kill myself? Praise the Lord. I, rem I remember somebody close to me that was owing and they wanted to come and arrest that person and the person said, yes, it's true, I'm owing. So I had to follow them because, you know, Sometimes the people you love do, do some things and you have to follow. So they so they took the person to a law enforcement place and were there. And when they got there, the the person that they took them to to arrest them happened to be their family members. What if that person had killed himself on the road? So when they got there. That's not how it is. I'm just trying to code it. When they got there, the police IG said, Ah, is this the person that is owing you? He said, Yes, so he has been owing me, he has been critical, he has been running from me. Said, I didn't run. So as soon as he entered, the police IG said, Ah. Are you not cool? Where are you from? So he told him, said, Ah, he's my nephew now. I said, Ah. Brother, I don't, sir. 
So the person that took somebody to the station was was looking. What's going on? I said, this person is on you. He's <laughs> my nephew. Don't worry, we'll pay you. I know him. If he doesn't pay you, come and come and come and come and hold me. That's how the case was settled. That person paid. But what if that person had killed themselves on the road? So you see why people, you see why they miss God. When you act without faith, you miss God's blessings. Are you guys here with me? If I didn't marry and act with faith, I would have missed my wife. Because, because, because as I, when I married my wife, the only things I had that was my own were just a yellow shirt, a, a, a gray trouser, uh, then one shoe, then the tapes that I was listening to, my books, and I didn't even own a bed or mattress. Okay, like I had a basket rack where 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 I put my tapes and stuff. If I said, nah, ah, I can't mind, I don't have anything. Ah, no, no, no. Let me get one million or two million. Then one one year, year guy that was hunting my wife down will have married my wife by now. But I said, God. God, you will help me to marry this, this lady. I told my mom. I told people. I'm getting married. You are getting married. Where are you going to stay? So my mom asked me, which house? Do you people have a house? I said, I said, um, we don't have yet. My said, so my mom laughed. I said, <laughs> I don't have a house. But the minute I said it, the whole universe came to my rescue. I didn't even have money for suit. And I'm not saying you go and get married though if you don't have any money. But see, there are things you take a step of faith on. You don't fold your hands. Remember, I'm speaking about living by faith in an hostile situation. Because not having money is an hostile situation. Are you guys here with me? One time we left church and we were going somewhere and my children were serving me ice cream. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't have no cash. Uh, Daddy, please, can we just... I was like, oh, God. Okay, okay, let's go. So, we bought the things and uh, and stuff. So, I met a guy there that I know. I greeted him, and so he greeted me. So, we bought what we wanted to buy. If I knew I've, if I knew that guy would pay, I would have bought more. So, I just bought some things. So, I just saw the guy was just doing like this with his card. So, so I asked the little, how much is everything? At the place, the man said, ah, no, ah, 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 no, sir. I got, is this, is this, is this all you want? I would have said, no, this is but I couldn't take it. And I said, yes. And I said, no. I said, no, don't worry. And I said, no, don't worry. You taught us well now. I pay for everything. And I paid. Ah! If I had known, I would have eaten that basmatic rice, then take that ice cream and everything. If you knew God has got you, you will have asked for more. But God has got you. Are you here with me? What are you waiting for? You are waiting for the situation of the country to change before you dream. Situation will never be palatable to dreamers. Dreamers dream while things are dark. Are you guys here with me? Chris, are you here with me? Are you here with me? So hope is your confident expectation. Because you need hope. Hope helps you to see. You see, the minute you can't see, you can't have faith. Are you guys here with me? No, my wife was not like this when I when I when I met, and I was not like this. I was skinny. My tummy was very flat. Bone was flatter than this. I was darker than this. My eyes were bigger than this. But she saw. Come on, say see. She saw. He saw. I saw something. She wasn't wearing a. She was. There was no wig then. They used to fix. You see now. There's there's wig and uh, omelets. I was that omelets. The omelets that you guys wear. What's that thing? Bones. Bones. Bones straight. I said omelets. Look at me. Bone. There was no bone straight that they wear now. There. They used to fix something with needle. Old people still fix with needle. And then they will fast for 30 days. We used to fast for 30 days. 
and you see her praying katoka bashanda and you look at her she will have fasted and everything and you look at is this is this woman going to be the mother of my children if you look at her in that state you miss god henceforth we know no man after the flesh are you guys here with me listen to me child of god what is that dream what is that thing that seems difficult you need to step out on faith are you guys here with me you can't have hope if you don't see the way god sees you can't have a tunnel view and be like god you should see like an eagle what's a tunnel view have you ever been in a tunnel forget the tunnels you see in this country are not tunnels those are not tunnels the first time i see correct the, the, the first time i ever saw a correct tunnel was when i traveled out and i saw a tunnel long tunnel the lights there were lights all over you couldn't see the end of the tunnel but at least you can see too and as we progressed we saw the end of that tunnel are you here with me if you see life as a tunnel you will never advance you have to see the way god sees and the way god sees is the way an ego sees are you here with me an ego sees it's a bird eye view the the eagle is on the world now it's on the cliff the ego has one of the sharpest sights for a created um animal it is said that the eagle from a plane can see can see a small object on the ground are you guys here with me it saw so sharply sharply this is how god wants you to see what you don't see you don't become what you don't see you don't confidently expect are you here with me once the devil has blinded your vision you can't have faith because your vision is linked to your faith you hear me child of god and let's just talk about this, this, these things are you here with me to so open the eyes of my understanding open my eyes that i might see enlighten illuminate my understanding that i might see because if you don't see you can't have faith faith is linked to what you see and faith you don't see physically you see with the eyes of the spirit are you guys being blessed here yeah. so tunnel view does not work with faith because tunnel view you only see the beginning you don't see the end it's like being in a nigerian university you only know when you are in year one you don't know when you finish year one praise the lord you guys are on strike for like eight months that was like a session praise the lord so you only know when you enter. I entered university. My matric number was 91. But I didn't finish until 96, 97 session. So we spent over five years for a four-year course. My first six months in the university here in Nigeria, in 1992 February, we went on strike. What happened to the strike? There was no water in the hostel. And there were issues. And somebody threw something, they called the police, they fired tear gas, it landed on somewhere, the hostel started burning, students started, you know, I was caught in then and I had to pack my things and it was a rude shock for me. And that was why it continued. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? What I'm trying to just let you guys see is that there are some human systems that you don't know where you come out when you enter into it. But every system God designed, it is not you who will say it's time to come out. It is God that tells you when it's time to, to you know. So you have to see with God's eyes. Praise the Lord. Because when you, you are unfaithful, listen to me. When you don't have faith in what you are doing, it elongates your time that you spend there. David. They left Egypt. They were supposed to have to spend 40 days in the wilderness. They started complaining. 40 days now became what? 40 years. So imagine there's a university called University of the Wilderness. And it's a 40 days course. A 40 days course now became 40 years course. So people that were giving birth to in the desert. 
were already adults by the time they left the desert. May that, may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. So if you don't understand the life of faith, that is how delays happen. So your delay is not caused by the devil. Your delay is caused by you. Where you are is the de- it's not the devil. It's you. It's our lack of faith. Praise the Lord. Let's move forward. Let me really say this then. We'll just move forward. Praise the Lord. Jesus never said there will be trying times. Jesus never said there will not be trying times. It will come. He said, but this should be your attitude. Are you here with me? Give us a Give me Second Kings six. Let me begin to close down right now. Second Kings, quickly. Second Kings six. Are you guys being blessed? Are you guys being blessed? All right. Please don't, don't, um, don't get discouraged if I'm preaching so passionately. It's the way God explained this to me, so that's why. Um, that's why it's, 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 it's doing me this how. Let's, let's go to verse 20. Um, verse 25. Second Kings 6, 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it. Enemy besieged it. Until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cup of those dung for five pieces of silver. Second Kings 6 verse 20 says, And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, they cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord do not help me, who shall help me? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? He now said, And the king said unto her, What happened to you? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give me your son, that we may eat him today. And we eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son. We ate my son. And I said unto her the next day, Give me your son, that we may eat him. But she has eaten her own son. And it came to pass, when the king ate the words of the woman, he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth upon his flesh. You think you are suffering now. We have not suffered to the point of killing people and eating. And it will not happen to us in Jesus' name. This was in Israel. Are you guys here with me? Women bargained. Meaning that, you see, that's why they say women are witches. You're asking me, where, where are the husband of these women when they were fighting over the children? Probably they have killed them and eaten the, the men. After eating the men, you know, okay, you give me your child, we'll kill your child. So, so they took the child, they caught and boiled the child. And ate. The other woman now loved her own child. Now went to hide the child. They now told the king. The king now said, "Ah, I am done for. In my time, people are eating people. These were those were trying times, but that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So you see, people go through trying times. Nations go through trying times. Nigeria is going through a trying time, but other nations too are going through their trying times." Colombia at a time were being ruled by were being ruled by drug lords. Nobody could be president in Colombia without the drug lords saying this is this is who we want it to be. Praise the Lord. But what should be our attitude when challenges come? Praise the Lord. You see, the warfare we prepare for is not a physical one, but something that will prevent you from birthing. The solutions that glory to God and succor to mankind. And I would explain. I would, I would explain. Trying times will come. But what should be your attitude when challenging times come? When I used to come from Lagos to, to school then, and I was broke, we didn't go to steal. I didn't go to steal. There were some guys they caught around our hostel. Those guys... Those guys used to go and rob at night and steal. And they beat those guys silly. I never stole. But what were the strategies that I employed to survive? I'll tell you today. I've never said this before. So if you're a student here, please come with me. There used to be a, a house near my house where I live. They had fruits. 
they had all kind of fruits. So we we'll now go there and tell them, them that we want to fetch water when we are broke. We we'll now go to the house, to the backyard. We we'll fetch water. We we'll now take purple. We are not stealing it though. We know one guy there. But there were sisters, babes in that house. So we we'll now take the purple and now wash them. And now put the purple in the buckets. Because we don't want them to we don't want them to feel or think that we came to pick purple. So we we'll now carry as if we are fetching water, but we are actually carrying fetching purpose. And so when we are hungry, we fed on purple and orange. In trying times, instead of you to be complaining and be fighting, you ask God to show you where your purple and your orange is. Are you guys here with me? Ask God, where is my purple? Where is my orange? Have you guys been blessed? Don't despise prophecies. You see, during trying times, find a, find a cause that God wants you to stay with and then prepare. Because it's warfare. Faith is warfare. To stay in faith is warfare. Because your faith will always be attacked. Are you guys here with me? But when you prepare, how do you prepare for your, how do you prepare? By, by, by listening to God, by hearing God's word. Are you guys here with me? Let's really, let's really talk about this. How does the eagle, does the eagle fly or soar? How does it soar? It finds wind going in its direction. Are you guys here with me? When I used to go to Lagos then, don't do it. Transport fair has never stopped me from moving. When we used to be in school, those were rough times. But we just had to just move. After my NYC, as I was coming home, there were no buses. I knew what we did to get to Lagos. We didn't know where they were taking us to, but by faith we climbed into trailers. and They drove us all around. Let God show you what to do. Praise the Lord. So the eagle waits for the wind. He perches on the mountain. And as the wind rolls by, what does the eagle does, uh, do? The eagle steps onto that wind. Are you guys here with me? Have you ever heard a, have you ever heard a singer sing then the keyboard without play? Come on, talk to me, guys. Chris, me. have you ever seen somebody like that? They want to sing and that's how singing. Hallelujah. Serve a great almighty God. Then they will not be looking for the kid. No. The, pro the professional way is that you allow the piano play. You listen to the key. Then you now ride on that key. If the key is too high for you, you tell them to bring it down. If they can't bring it down, then you do what now? You stretch your voice. They that wait on God will renew their strength. And mount up wings like eagle. So we are supposed to live by faith. Are you guys here with me? You are supposed to live by faith in the trying situations. Don't give up. You see, complaining and murmuring are signs of giving up. When you complain and murmur, you don't see what God is doing. You don't see a way out. You don't see solutions. Are you here with me? How can you say you are hungry and you don't have food at home when you have some basic things? Are you guys here with me? You look at the kind of food you can make with what you have. When we first got married and that first year, we had only yams. We had plenty of yams at home. And my wife was asking, what would I say? Yam. My wife said, but yam. I said, look, there are so many things you can cook with yam. You can fry the yams. You can grate the yams and do uh, balls with it. You can do uh, 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 porridge with it. You can just cook it as as fresh yam. We can microwave the yam and just call. You know, you can do different things with the, with the yam. So we had different flavors of yam. Praise, praise the Lord. Don't be so myopic as not to see what God is doing in the situation that you are in. 
Are you here with me? So, what do you do when you are waiting for God? Because the day that wait on God, I didn't know it's Isaiah, are we? Isaiah 40, verse 30, right? Okay, 42, verse. Okay, 42, verse 31. Did I wait on the Lord? So, what should you do when you are waiting on God? What should you do? Feed well on God's word. You are waiting to be married. You are waiting for the wife. What are you doing? Just listen to work work song. Uh, Bob Mali, Bob Mali, coming in from the fall. Buffalo soldier. Changlang Raspa. If you know your history, your life is draining from under you. You are listening to a man who has been dead since 1981. Who is criticizing the government. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying that don't you have better things to do with your life? Are you guys here with me? You are joining a non-entity to sing a useless song. Voila, voila, voila. He's prophesying hardship into his own life. You know, life of people. Have you ever seen a picture of him where he's at where he is at rest? Everywhere I see him or his handle on social media, I block it. I don't want anything that has to do with him. Are you here with me? The attitude to block things that keeps you from soaring means that you are inviting God into your life. Hey guys, been blessed. I know this message is a bit lengthy, but once you get this, you have gotten it. Are you guys here with me? So feed well, feed on God's word, say the right things to your baby. You see, when you feed on God's word, you are carrying a vision. You see, when situations happen, don't let what you carry in your heart, don't let it be affected. When my wife was pregnant with her, with her, with her, with her, with her, with her, with her first child, she stopped eating some things. We stopped going on some journeys. She would stay back at home and rest because the baby, we were, we were, we were careful with the baby. Even the way we make love was, was now calm. It was careful. It was not, jaga, 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 jaga. no, no, no. It was just careful so that we don't upset the baby. Are you guys here with me? Just keep looking straight if you don't understand what I'm saying. But these are things you should learn. You protect your vision, your baby. You say the right things to the baby, your vision. All my children, they're always moving in my wife's. And I'll look at them. I'll look at their legs. Ah, look at them, look at them, look at this. My wife never said, oh, you stupid baby. Look how you are moving. Disturbing me. Yeah, yeah, baby. You see, when you abuse, you see, babies that are abused before they are given birth to, when they are given birth to, they have a tendency to misbehave. But the baby that you speak to in the womb that you love, when they come out, you see the babies, they are loving, smiling at you with big eyes. Are you guys there with me? So when you don't have a baby, catch one from God. Everyone deserves and needs a baby. Everyone ought to have a baby. And what I mean baby is it's a vision. Let me shock you with this and I'll just move on. If you don't have a vision in a trying situation, you do anything. You fall for anything. Are you here with me? Before I got to understand what GT was, when I, entered the uni- when I entered the university, I was going to parties anyhow. I didn't know what GP was. Nobody still told me that uh, GP is 4 point something. No, I didn't know. So my year one, year two party. By year two, go to three, I had eight carryovers. They told me my GP was, is it, eh? They are now buckled up. So when you don't know why you are doing something, you will abuse that thing. When you don't have a vision, when you don't have something you are living for, you will fall for every situation. Are you guys here with me? Don't give up on your vision. Don't give up on God. These are the strategies and ways to live and survive in, the, in an economy like this. By feeding on God's word, by waiting on God's word, by saying the right things. Stop shooting yourself in the leg. And you say things like, ah, if, if I don't see food job, I'll, I'll just die. 
how dare you say how, how dare you say such things about yourself how dare you how dare you is it is is your life your life how dare you how how dare you say negative things about that precious life of yours Great men dream dreams during times of great trials. Are you guys here with me? Vanessa, are you here with me? It's the times when you don't have things that you should ask God to give you dreams. Because you see, nobody actually dies by trials, suffering. It is, the, it is excess joy that actually kills people. Kore said, is shaking Pani. Ayogogani Bruce Lee. Meaning that it's too much joy, joyousness. Imagine a guy went to take a selfie on the train. He went to take a video selfie on the train to amaze his social media audience. And if the guy fell and it's go and look at it on YouTube. A guy went hiking and he hung up. And I wanted to take a selfie just to amaze people. And the guy died. What we even make with me that I'm from a village that my parents, God is helping us. I will now go to a hike. Do I even have boots to hike? I will now, now carry phone and I'll be snapping. You can never you can never see me do some do some things. Though. And you can never see me say some things. Though. Child of God, during times of great trials, it is a time to dream. Are you here with me? When people, when people are not dreaming, when people are carefree, that is the time for you to say, Holy Spirit, show me what to do. Dr. Martin Luther King, when everybody was fighting in the U.S., blacks against whites, the guy said, I have a dream. That one day, I mean, the guy saw, the guy had a dream. Are you guys here with me? He had a dream. Praise the Lord. Nigeria seems to be in challenge now. But what dreams are you catching? What telecom solutions will be born? You see, listen to what I'm going to say now. You see this issue of bank transfer, money transfer. I didn't see money. I didn't see cash. There are no finance. No you see what will happen? There are, some, there are some sharp people that will create solutions out of all this. I was watching a documentary in China and they were asking young people that, do you have, do you have any cash? I said, cash? Cash? What is cash? And I was asking her that, don't you like cash? He said, cash. He said, I, I don't like cash. I like money. So I said, okay, how do you guys buy things? They buy things by tapping their phone camera on something in a store. So the, so, so the teller tells you how much you are owing. Or, or, or buy, you have an app on your phone that's wired to your. If I, it's their WeChat, like WhatsApp, they monetize their own WeChat there. So you can be on WhatsApp and do everything. You know now you can go from WhatsApp to your Facebook. You don't know. You can advertise on Facebook now via WhatsApp. So you know. So 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 in China and Japan, they pay for goods via. Their chats by just tapping something. And we are still here running to banks. Why will why will able-bodied men be going to banks and queuing and queuing and queuing for money? I'm not saying it's wrong that they are doing that. But yesterday I didn't have cash and I came to church. I paid, I transferred everything. So let me say this to you. I have a commercial bank. But also have a, also have an online digital bank for your for your disposable income. Don't use your commercial bank to transfer one thousand, two thousand, five hundred. Use a good digital bank. It's faster that way. Are you guys here with me? So someone is already creating solutions for us. I don't want to mention names online right now. But there are people that they started their business in the pandemic. 
Are you here with me? May the Lord open the eyes of your understanding in the name of Jesus. I said, may the Lord open the eyes of your understanding in the name of Jesus. Right now, there's a new university that is starting out right now, and it's going to be online. It's a private-owned university. They started their business with other solutions. When the pandemic was going out, instead of people going for lessons, they were actually teaching people from the comfort of their homes. So you didn't need, so so you don't have to have a lesson teacher. You just install the app and you pay, and they teach you. You know, right now they are starting a university in this country, online university. So after a while now, you see that you see that the number of people that will be attending universities in this country will drop. The people that will be doing it online, it will not be expensive. Are you here with me? And that's why you see, you go on Facebook, you see, you see several universities, Ivy League now, they now have online classes. So don't let what is happening, don't let it affect you. You live by faith and you live by knowledge. Are you guys here with me? Vanessa, are you getting something? Great trials are great Goliaths that can be used as stepping stone into something glorious. Don't be carried away by the cries of the multitude. You are not a multitude. You are the chosen and the elect. One pastor told me, he said, one of the guys in this church got admission to a school abroad. I said, how? He said, he applied and he asked him if, if he has any gift. He said to them, he can play the piano. So they asked him to, to set up something that he should play. And he played. And so plus what he played and this, and, and the guy just traveled. These are the times when you need, these are the times when it's dangerous to have only your degree. You just, what can you do? Uh, I have BSc statistics. I didn't ask you that. What can you do? In statistic, what can you do? I'm a computer. These are the days when people introduce themselves to companies that if you employ me, this is what I'm going to do for this company. Bringing solutions to trying times. Discovering by faith what God wants you to do. Are you guys here with me? You see, saviors hide themselves to get solutions from God and then come out and prophesy to problems via their solutions. Saviors don't cry on the streets. And I'm not saying it's wrong for those who cry on their streets. Maybe they are, maybe they are saviors. But if you will save this generation, you don't join the multitudes to cry. If, you see, Moses didn't join the multitudes and was crying. He went up to meet God somewhere, to, to talk to God. Are you here with me? If your calling is to join the multitudes I'm leading, fine. But if that's not you, then, then this is my message for you. You are a savior of your generation. You need to hear God. Are you guys here with me? Scientists have proved that it is hard for you to see two or three eagles together. Eagles don't flock together. It's birds that flock together. The only time you see eagles together is when they are mating, most of the times. And when eagles give birth to chicks, eaglets, go and study the training of eagles. After a while, the eagle is the one that scatters the nest. Because when the eaglet starts becoming comfortable, the eagle will carry the eaglets. It will fly, it will fly high and drop the eaglets. Then the eaglets will fall and be shouting. Then the eagle will go and, and sweep and carry the eaglets and bring them up and throw them again. It does that until one day it will throw the eaglets up. And as the eaglets are coming to find its wings, trials are like that. God wants you to find your wings. God wants you to find your footing. Think of what to do when there is no finance. Think of what to eat when there's no food. Think of a strategy within the confines of God's word. Are you here with me? When I got married, uh, of course, I would go to my mom, go to my dad, please can I have, mom, please can you give me this? And, but after a while, my wife and I said, look, we can't be going to these people every time. We, too, we started sewing. Are you here with me? We can't be going back to the house where we left every time. It's time to start sewing. 
the eaglet must become an eagle too. Praise the Lord. So you are the savior of this generation. Go and hide yourself and ask God, what would you have me do? You do this by faith. Not because you are capable, but because you trust God. Are you guys there with me? Are you guys there with me? I want to end in five minutes. Now, there are three kinds of music artists. And God gave me this as I was preparing. Three kinds of artists. Now, number one, there are some artists, they go away to hide for a long time. You won't see them in for two, three years. They won't release any music. They won't do anything. They might not even go for any shows. But when they come back and they sing one song, everywhere is full. Example of them is who? Michael Jackson. Um, Adele. Is it Adele, right? Adele? Michael Jackson hardly releases an album every year. I think every three, four, five years. It's only in, 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 in Nigeria that Fuji artists can release album twice a year and do live shows. Are you guys here with me? So great artists, they go and hide. They wait on God. And God gives them something, they come out. The second artist, they observe what is going on and use an opportunity to minister to people. That is, they exploit the situation for personal and public gain. They think about what is happening. Somebody will think, with this, this, this money thing now, somebody will have, will have composed a song Oh, the CBN slash, the, the CBN plot. When the CBN talk, there's no cash in. There's any silly money. You know, you just hear people just sing songs. Just exploit the situation. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's bad. But some people have exploit situations and they've become rewarded for it. Example, Ray Charles. Ray Charles was a blind musician that was called to a concert to, to come and minister. But he noticed that there was segregation. They separated the whites and the black. And he told them, I won't sing. They said, why? He said, because I'm black. You want me to sing? And you are playing segregation. And he didn't sing. Ten years after. Are you guys here with me? Ten years after. That state honored him with what he did. And they used his song as the state song, Georgia. Are you here with me? And the third kind of artist. At the baseless, clueless, ephemeral singer who sing for the vibes and music gets lost with time. Stupid songs like Oh yeah, Koma Jeba, Oh yeah, Koma Jeba, Oh yeah, Koma Jeba, Oh yeah, Koma Jeba. I heard that until I said, What? What kind of song is this? Praise the Lord. So the question is that what kind of artist are you? Come on, talk to me, guys. What kind of artist? Are you the kind of artist when trying times come, you go away, you hide, God gives you something, you come back, he blesses people, he blesses you, blesses you. Or number two, are you the one that observes what is going on and you speak to it? Or number three, are you just the one that just blab and just come on Facebook and just say, hey, we are suffering. Things are bad. We are dying every day. We have not eaten. No salary. And your boss is looking at that. You now come come to work on Monday, and your boss said, "James, I saw you on Sunday. You said there's no salary. That uh, whatever. Okay, from today I sack you. We cannot have somebody like you. Okay. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. So don't just confess, but prophesy what God said about you. Hallelujah. Speak direct words. Are you guys here with me? Play the keyboard for me. Speak direct words. Don't allow unbelief to contaminate you." Make declaration, make it private. You could because, because you see, when you make public confessions, sometimes people can confuse you. You guys, listen, are you guys here with me? Are you guys here with me? Make private confessions, declare God's word in your house. Have a have a personal altar. Miracle, have a personal altar. Are you guys here with me? Let you have a personal altar where you declare God's word. Are you guys here with me? Make the declaration private. Don't allow unbelief to contaminate you. Don't allow what is going on out there to affect your faith in God. Are you guys here with me? So on the wings of the Holy Spirit. Life does not answer to feelings or good work. Life answers to principles. Praise the Lord. Life is warfare. Fill up your heart with bullets of God's word. And
prophesy. Life answers to prophecy. Declare God's word. Are you guys here with me? When Jesus got there and he said, Lazarus had died, he first of all cried. And he now said, Father, I thank you because you hear me. He now declared, Lazarus, come forth. Stop joining every conversation online. Stop joining words when they are abusing governments and everything. Be careful. Be careful. Pray that your Lazarus will come forth in the name of Jesus. Speak life. Let's rise up on our feet for two minutes. Begin to speak life right now. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak life over your situation. Begin to decree to Nigeria. Begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak life. I speak life. Begin to speak what you want right now. Come on. I want to hear you speak. I didn't ask you to pray in tongues. Begin to speak life into your work. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak life into your promotions. In the name of Jesus. I have everything that we need in the name of Jesus. We are protected in the name of Jesus. Oh, I decree. I'm sorry and the wind like eagles in the name of Jesus. I have been led at a right by God in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to speak right. Oh, this is the time to live by faith. Hey, this is the time to have faith, to uphold your faith. You prophesy, you speak what God is saying. What God is saying to you, not what Nigeria is saying to you. Not what America is saying, not what Ukraine is saying. Yes, you empathize, but you speak God's word up. You fight back and speak God's word. Not what is happening in your family, but what God is happening through you. Come on, decree and declare. I am filled, I am full. In the name of Jesus, Mark 11, verse 23, we shall speak to this mountain. He didn't say cry to the mountain. He didn't say he, uh, uh, get fancy with the mountain. He said speak to the mountain. Let the mountain move. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I see people just rejoice in this place? Hallelujah. Say that my tomorrow is better. My tomorrow is better in the name of Jesus. Come on. Decree and declare. Decree and declare that water gets to me where I am in the name of Jesus. Not only ankle deep. Oh, I am so much by the words of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your holy name, oh God. I pray for someone here, oh Lord. Honor the sound of my voice. Let that be hard down in your life in the name of Jesus. You are carrying too much weight. I join my hands. I join my faith with yours. We pull those things out. That you don't need to accommodate in your faith. In the name of Jesus. I, I, I prophetically push you into your destiny. Prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, be aware of what God is doing in your day, in your time. In the name of Jesus. I pray that your eyes are open. You see what God wants to do in the name of Jesus. I pray that men find reasons to bless you in the name of Jesus. That is what will happen to you in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Say yes, O oh God. Say yes, O oh Lord. Say yes, O oh Lord. I am elevated above the situations happening around me in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. For we have prayed, for we have declared in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's just rejoice. Let's rejoice. That is, come on, let's rejoice. 